Good morning. Before I jump into this article, um, I ask you to, if you could please keep my daughter in your prayers. As you know, yesterday she turned 30. 30 years ago, God blessed me with such a wonderful, precious baby girl. She'll always be my baby girl. Well, she went to New York. She, uh, what happened to the days when you just said, hey, happy birthday, and bring home a cake, you know? Kids today do things different. But a friend of hers, mother or father, gets some cheaper tickets. That's what she told me. Well, my daughter informs me yesterday, and yesterday, like I said, was her birthday. She went with three of the girls. Three of the girls. One, and I'm surprised this happened, it's a good friend of hers, and um, I actually babysit her son from time to time. Well, three of the girls had an argument, and they left. These girls, who are not friends, left my daughter alone in New York on her birthday. I have been struggling... I've been praying a lot, and I've been struggling to keep calm because I'm a mother, you know. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, okay, my daughter is in a hotel room in New York alone. How could anybody in their right minds do something like that and call himself a friend? I said, Desi, they are not friends. <coughs> now, if I was rich... I'd be hopping on a plane to New York, you know. But she knows somebody that lives in New York, and she said the girl's staying with her. Thank you, Jesus, for this girl. But these others? I'm not babysitting that girl's son anymore. <laughs> I mean, I really don't babysit him that much, but... I mean, I don't make that much, you know. She pays me $30 to watch him a couple of hours, but... I mean, everything helps, but... I'm just waiting for her to ask if I can babysit her kid. She's saying, nope. You leave my child alone in New York City on her birthday. You don't want me to babysit your son? No. So. She, um, she's okay. She's coming home tomorrow. I wish she would just stay with family. You know, because we have family up there, but. I have family and, um, the, a fam one family member in the city and then the rest of Long Island, so. If you could please keep her in your prayers. And also, if you could please keep all the hurricane victims in your prayers. I, I can't imagine what they're going through. We have a government that's not helping them. If you have family that was hit by the hurricane, if you've been hit by the hurricane, I pray for you every day. I can't imagine what you're going through. But just know that you have... Tons of brothers, brothers and sisters who are praying for you and who love you. And as for me, um, when they, uh, when the doctor checked my lymph node, he said it's also my muscle that's inflamed. Um, I'm on antifungal medicine, but my tongue was fine when they they looked into into my throat. So I don't know. Usually, if it's something like that, your tongue's white. Um, it's not too bad today. It still feels strained, but my breathing isn't good because if those inhalers caused it, I haven't been taking the inhalers. So, um, so yeah, my breathing's kind of bad, but you know, the good news is we're getting our new glorified body soon. <coughs> Praise the Lord. We are getting a new glorified body soon. I do have an appointment for the echo, uh, cardiogram results, you know, they can tell me that by phone. You know, I may have to reschedule it. Um, but. They can tell me this by phone. That's what gets me, you know. They, they could tell me this by phone. The results, I'm just getting the results. It's just, everything's about money, you know. But, Jesus is returning soon. It's all almost over. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean. All of your sins, past, present, and future. When you repent and you live for Christ, you will be raptured. 
we believe in the shedding of his blood to wash our sins clean. And we're about to kill him. Will we be here by the end of the year? I pray we're not. Time will tell, but it is soon. Put your faith and trust in Jesus, not these world leaders. <coughs> if you feel led to donate, donations go to help pay for bills, to help pay for my medical bills. Um, I'll have links underneath the, in the description box underneath this video. And I do appreciate your prayers and your help and all your support. I, I, I would be in such a mess right now. In every way, if it wasn't for y'all's help, your prayers, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And you're all in my prayers and your families in my prayers every day. And we're all going to see each other soon. This is from Now the End Begins. Prepare an imminent attack on Iran as Emmanuel Macron calls for an immediate arms embargo on Israel. <coughs> Slowly. The world against Israel. Netanyahu said no country would accept rocket barrages on its citizens, and that's true. And neither will Israel. As Emmanuel Macron calls for an arms embargo. I may have to pause occasionally, I'm sorry. Welcome to the Jewish New Year, and welcome to the start of a regional war with Iran. Things really got rolling to a boiling point just hours ago as Emmanuel Macron called for an arms embargo on Israel, resulting in a response from the Jewish leader. Netanyahu is having none of it. But what he is having is a massive military reply to the 200-plus ballistic missiles sent over by Iran. They have right to defend themselves, you know, <coughs> with many of them landing on Israel. The powder keg is full. The match has been lit. It's showtime. Habakkuk 1 verse 5 says, Behold. Sorry, one second. Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe. They'll be told you. Things are changing so fast in the Middle East right now. By the time you read this, this article may already be out of date. <clears throat> King James Bible. <clears throat> Having a King James Bible handy will serve as a nice buffer to keep you up to speed. Is this just a regional war? Or are the words of the prophets leaping off the pages right now? I will leave you to make that determination for yourself, but before this weekend is over, we'll have begun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Netanyahu says Israel has a duty and right to hit back at Iran over missile attack as Macron calls her in arms embargo. Netanyahu on Saturday repeated his promise to strike back against Israel for its ballistic missile attack on, on Israel earlier this week, saying <clears throat> it is a right any other country would have speaking from the Korea military headquarters in Tel Aviv. Netanyahu said, quote, no country in the world would accept such an attack on the cities and citizens. He's right. And he said Israel won't either. <laughs> Israel has the duty <clears throat> and right to defend itself and respond to these attacks, and it will do so. The IDF said earlier Saturday the response would be, quote-unquote, serious and significant. Iran's rocket barrage, the second such attack, this year came amid the war against terror groups, Hamas in the Gaza Strip and Hezbollah in Lebanon. I got a video here. <coughs> Iran said it fired the missiles into Israel in response to attacks that killed leaders of Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. It referenced Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. <coughs> Excuse me. And Revolutionary Guard General Abbas. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that last name. Both killed in an Israeli attack, airstrike last week in Beirut. It also mentioned Ishmael, whatever that last name is, ha Haniye, the former leader of Hamas, <coughs> who was assassinated in Tehran in July in an attack widely attributed to Israel. 
rocket fire in, at northern Israel, while Lebanon continued over the weekend, while the IDF said it believed it had killed at least 440 Hezbollah operatives since the start of the, since the, start of the ground operations on Monday. Titus 2 verse 13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Time is short. Time is short. The Lord has given us an open door with a tremendous course for us to fulfill that will create an excellent experience at the judgment seat of Christ. I think they're asking for donations here. Please pray for our efforts. And if the Lord... Oh, <coughs> <clears throat> it says, please play, pray for our efforts, and if the Lord leads you to donate, be as generous as possible. This war is real. The battle is hot, and the time is short. It's it's now the end begins, so ask for don donations sound as now the end begins, but um, sorry. <laughs> I guess I wasn't supposed to read that part. <laughs> so It's kind of like when, you, when somebody's reading a teleprompter, and they say, turn page now, you know. That would be me saying that. Turn page now. I, I hope that would say that. <coughs> I've been trying to <coughs> figure out how you do Telegram. Now, hopefully, when I turn this on, it won't go to a video. Let's see. Let's see if there's any news. Um. um one second. I'm sorry. This, because uh, I haven't been able to figure out how to do Telegram, and I think I figured it out. Because whenever I'd, I'd um, install it, it would just be everybody in my contacts page, you know. <clears throat> this says, um, following prior IDF intelligence and ongoing situational assessment, the IDF activity in the field that all indicated the presence of terrorists and terror infrastructure in the area of Jabalia, J-A-B-A-L-I-Y-A. In the northern Gaza Strip, as well as efforts by Hamas to rebuild its operational capabilities in the area, the 162nd Division began operating in the in that area overnight Sunday. <clears throat> the troops of the 401st Brigade, 460th Brigade, have successfully encircled the area and are currently continuing to operate in that area. Prior to and during the operation, the IAF struck dozens of military targets in order to assist IDF ground troops. Among the targets struck were weapons storage facilities, underground infrastructure sites, terrorist cells, and additional military infrastructure sites. This operation to systematically dismantle terror, terrorist infrastructure in the area will continue as long as required. You know, they're, they're not, they don't want it. They don't want a two-state solution. They want Israel gone, you know. <clears throat> Here's one that says, I don't know if this is old news or, um, cause I'm still trying to figure out how to work telegram. This says, um, from Amir Safadi, it might be, this might be old news. Iran military chief killed by Israeli airstrike in Lebanon, the targeted new lead, new leader of Hezbollah. So, um, let's see what else. So I don't know if that's old news here. Let's see what else. <clears throat> and um, Dolly Parton has announced that she will donate $1 million to the recovery relief. The singer said she was heartbroken by the destruction um, after the storm. So God bless her for helping. That's, that's wonderful that she's helped because our own government isn't helping. That's awesome. And what else? Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's not seeing much else. Um, there is another hurricane brewing. We got to pray for everybody in that area. It, it's a. Uh, we got to pray for everybody in that area because um, pray that. Uh, it, I I can't imagine what they're going through right now. Um. This hurricane is in the direct path of my family. My family lives in Tampa, Newport, Ritchie. 
Um, it says it's expected to develop and head for the Tampa Bay area and it's likely to become the strongest hurricane this year. I think this is my aunt. She lives um, on my dad's side. It's my father's older sister. There's a sinkhole over her house. And when she found out many, many years ago, they were putting cement under it. The sinkhole apparently is so big that they had to keep pouring more and more and more and more cement in. And finally they said, we can't pour anymore. And it's a low-lying area where she lives. So, um, yeah, it's saying that uh, the last time... Uh, TPA took a direct hit from a hurricane was in 1921. This is true because they never, um, she's lived in that area since the 70s. And it's uh, Tampa, Newport, Ritchie. And they haven't been, usually they get the tail end of it. They haven't been hit with a direct hurricane. So um, if you're in that area, just uh, take precautions, get out. Um, my aunt, she doesn't leave. You know, she, uh, where did they go? I think she goes to my cousin Jeanette's house. Them. We've seen what the, what just happened with Helene. So, if you're in that area, if you know, just yeah, it's um. Let's see where it says it's gonna hit. Um, it looks like Wednesday at two p.m. Right now, it's predicted to be a three. So, and that's pretty strong. So, um, I will leave the link to that article in the description box and. Well, we're still here. Let's see. Is the Feast of Trumpets still going on? Let's see. Let me see. When does it end? Um, I can't find it. Um, I can't find it. But well, we're still here. But you know what? We are going home soon. We are. God's timing is perfect. I know we're all wanting to get out of here and go home. And remember, if you're going through struggles, give it to the Lord. If you're going through financial problems, health problems, um, maybe problems at work, um, maybe um, differences of opinion with a family member, Give it to the Lord and pray. Not that you guys don't, but these are trying times. And I've been, I, I've been, I always pray. I always pray. Every day I pray to the Lord. But when my, my daughter told me that, if you can imagine being a mother, I'm thinking, okay, well, they ruined my daughter's 30th birthday. And my daughter is now in New York City alone, you know. Um, give it to the Lord. And I actually had a peace come over me. And I felt in my spirit, she will be okay. And it's the way I heard it. It was just so peaceful. She will be okay. So, I love you guys. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you. And I will talk to you soon.